credit, and that's where it's got to end. So how do I get from 12,000 to 15,400? Well, I'm missing a number. There's sort of a number that needs to plug in here. And the missing number you can see has got to be missing a credit of 3,400. Okay, so I know I need to credit my allowance for 3,400. Again, if it's missing in a T account, the, the way to remedy that is to do a journal entry. So on December 31st, I'm going to credit, oops, December 31st, I'm going to credit my allowance for $3,400. Now, what's the related debit here? Well, let's go back up and look at what we did when we did the income statement method. We went debit bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Same thing here. Debit bad debt expense, credit the allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm getting lazy and just calling it the allowance, but uh, you may need to write out the whole the whole spiel there. I put bed debt expense. Bad debt expense is $3,400. So we've got a good journal entry again. Debit bad debt expense, credit the allowance, $3,400. So just to reiterate the difference, when we're doing the income statement method, as we did in the video prior to this, we said the amount we calculate is our bad debt expense, plug it into the journal entry. When we calculate a based on a percentage of outstanding accounts receivable, that amount we calculate is the ending balance of our allowance for doubtful accounts. That amount needs to go into a T account, and then we kind of work backwards to figure out our journal entry. So again, I knew I started with 12000 in my allowance. I knew I had to end with 15400 credit balance. So to go from a 12000 credit balance to a 15400 credit balance, I credit it. 30, uh, 3400 So I credit my allowance.